So, it's meant to be our last chapter before Easter, but I'm going to sneak an extra chapter in. I just think we deserve it, mainly because I want to read another chapter. So we've got 16 and then 17 now. So, we are now, we've just had Saf at home with Dad. Saf seems to be calming down about things. Her and Dad's were having a discussion about the cat um, bowl that she hid. And the reason that it was familiar to her was because her mother had decorated it like the two cats from Kuwait. And her, she'd even told her dad the same story that Saf witnessed in Kuwait. Well, from the stars at the top of this chapter, it suggests we're heading straight there. So let's go. The house is different today. Newer. The cracks in the walls have disappeared and the photos are no longer faded. Like I told Izzy, the doctors gave us good news the other day. Could the house be getting better because mum is? It is alive after all. And maybe, just maybe, me playing this game is helping her. The more I visit, the better mum seems to be doing. The tap is running in the bathroom, next to the kitchen. I notice it right away. Almost like the sound is amplified across the entire house. But I ignore it. Instead I run up, up, up the stairs, all the way to the top of the house. I need to see mum again, need to try to get to her. By the time I'm standing in front of her bedroom door, I'm out of breath. The silver branches grow thick up here. I was so distracted last time I hadn't noticed. And blooming right above Mum's bedroom door is another yellow flower. Just like the one in the courtyard. I seem to notice a new one each time I visit. The crack on the door is gone. So I can no longer see Mum asleep on her bed. But that's okay because it's the keyhole I'm looking for. I walk to the door and inspect the golden handle. It has intricately patterned carvings that wind all the way around it. That's when I realise there's no keyhole. But then how is it locked? Mum! I call knocking. Mum, open the door. Nothing. I bend down and try to peer through the crack beneath the door. I can see the room same as before, but from this vantage point, I can't get a glimpse of Mum. I try a few more times to open the door, but it doesn't budge. Think, Sophia. Think. Could it be magic? Like everything else that seems to control the house? Silver branches growing on walls, cats that lead humans to secret hideaways, and swirls of smoke shaped like birds. I know now this place is magic, and I know it's real, but it's not the sort of magic that comes from wands and spells. It's perfume that holds memories. It's being closer to mum and talking to dad. So then, what is the key to the door? That's when I feel it, and it's as if the house is answering my question. The damp. It starts at my toes and works its way up my legs. I stand up and gasp when I see it. The house is filling up with water. Fast. The stairs below have turned into a pool. The water comes up quickly, quickly, threatening to fill the entire house. How is this happening? There are open windows and doors all over. It doesn't make any sense. The water is slipping through the gap under Mum's bedroom door. What if it drowns her? The realisation lands hard in my chest. I look down the stairs again. The photos on the wall still hang there and the furniture below hasn't moved an inch. The leaves of silver branches beckon me like they're asking me to go back down. Where is all this water coming from? It can't be the tap, can it? It must be, but why? I think back to the bird of smoke and how it guided me up the stairs to Mum's room. The game was telling me to come here, wasn't it? Yes. Then it tried to guide me back down and I ignored it. Dread surges through me. I made this happen. It's like this really is a game and I've broken the wall, the rules. In Fairy Hunters, if you try to cheat, instead of getting kicked out of the game, your character is stripped of all but their most basic powers, making it virtually impossible to win. I was cheating because I was meant to turn the tap off, not come upstairs. I was... That's why the memory faded last time. I wasn't doing the right thing. And now it's trying to warn me again. But what is it trying to tell me? Think, Safia, think. I hit myself on the head, hoping it might knock some sense into me. It does, because I almost poked myself in the eye with the bracelet. The bracelet! Of course! When I found the bracelet from the first memory, it unlocked the second one. And when I found the cats from the second memory, it unlocked the third. The aim of the game is to find objects and unlock memories. And mum's room isn't the next level. It's the boss level. The final one. That's what the bird was trying to show me. I don't have time to think about it anymore. Though as the water is up to my ankles, I just dive. 
The water is cold, but it's a relief from the heat of the day. I try to swim down, but it's harder than it looks. And I float up to the top, splashing around like a duckling. I try again this time, holding onto the banister. I pull myself down with force while trying to hold my breath and use the stairs to guide me down. I've always been all right at swimming, but I've never had to save someone from drowning. Something takes over my mind, my body, and I push with all my might. I swim down, down, down. Eventually, I make it to the bottom of the stairs. Everything looks exactly as it had before, the water f- before the water filled the house, except it's hazy, like I'm peering through frosted glass. I look up and just above, about see where the water ends, towards the top of the house. If I let go of the banister, I'm going to float up, up, up. I push myself off the bottom of the stairs and try to swim to the bathroom door a few metres away. But as I kick off the bottom step, my body floats upward, even as I propel myself forward. I almost make it across. My fingers trace the edges of the door frame, but I can't get a grip. And I float away from it like a discarded piece of rubbish in the ocean. I'm running out of breath now. I know nothing will happen to me here. It's only a game. But what if something happens to Mum? It's her mind after all. If I run out of breath before I turn off the tap, will it keep running even after I've left the house? I don't think anymore. I don't have time to. I just act. I let the ceiling of the foyer catch me and kick it off it like a frog. My fingers manage to grab the frame of the bathroom door this time. Now I just need to get from there to the tap. I use all my remaining strength to force my body down. I miss the tap the first time and bounce upwards, slamming against the ceiling. I try again and this time my fingers clasp it. I'm so happy I could scream with joy. But there isn't enough air left in my lungs. My chest is burning now and I can see spots forming in front of my eyes like stars. I swear I can hear the hospital monitor like I'm being pulled out of the game. The tap's slippery because it's made of metal but I hook my legs under the sink to keep myself still. I turn and turn and turn it off. The water stops flowing. I can tell because the bubbles have gone. And just like a giant plug has been released, all the water in the house disappears. I fall from halfway up the room and collapse on the floor. I sit up gasping for breath, holding onto my throat. When I look around, I'm in the hospital again. Puddles of water surround mum's bed. But as soon as I blink, they're gone. I pat myself down and find that I'm entirely dry. Then I check Mum's monitor. I sigh with relief when I see it's all okay. The squiggly line is flowing across the machine steadily, just like before. She's okay. Mum's going to be okay. Isn't this brilliant, guys? We're at the end of that chapter, and luckily we're having another chapter today. I just like the idea that these dreams, memories, are are, are a game. Just to find clues to go to the next stage of discovery I think it's a wonderful idea and I think it feels very real very realistic the way it's being told so superbly right one more chapter and that's us till after Easter it's a bonus chapter though right have that shortly